When we look at mannequins in store nowadays, what you'll see in the majority of cases is a size 6 dummy even though over 50% of women in this country are over size 14. According to Aurelio Cullen in Victoria and Albert Museum, a mannequin is not just a tool to display the clothes to the potential customers, but also a mirror of ideal body shape in the particular period. However, this was not always the case. Up until 1950s, mannequins had similar body size to actual women of the time. In the past, mannequin went through various changes. There was time when it only had torso, torso it had, had less full body, different body parts, and so on. The materials varied as well, depending on the period, from wood, wire, leather, and more. After the French Revolution, it wasn't just Marie Antoinette who lost a head. Mannequins of the time were often headless too. However, with their keen appreciation for fashion and shopping, French brought back the full-bodied mannequin in 1870. As Eleanor Thompson from Brighton Museum and Art Gallery said, department stores began to have large plate glass windows overlooking at the street and a whole massive industry of shop merchandising grew up around creating very narrative scenes which would encourage passers-by to imaginatively identify with the clothes that they were on display. It was almost like a form of entertainment. People were fascinated with window display and wanted more and more realistic mannequins and to satisfy people's need, there was an artist named Pierre Emans. Dutch artist Pierre Emans was one of the leading mannequin manufacturers of 1920s along with Siegel. Emans was known for his ultra-realistic mannequins. His mannequin would have wax skin, glass eyes, real hair, implanted teeth and was also wearing full makeup. He achieved liveliness of mannequin by a slight turn of face and other body parts like arms and legs. His mannequin were quite flat-chested and had a wide hip like a pear shape. A pear shaped body was ideal back then, perfect shape for the drop waist flapper dress. Because this play mannequin was realistic, it gave shoppers a good idea what the dress would look like on them. Eman's mannequin might have been nothing more than all the others, but to him at least, the mannequins themselves were form of art. His mannequins were so special, he gave them different characteristics and named his mannequins like Aline, Roberta and Nadine. In his catalogue, he staged a few scenes with mannequins and the mannequins looked very realistic. They even looked like they were interacting with each other. Also, as a part of catalogue, there was a selection of male faces created by him to show different emotions. Mannequins have developed from just a studio tool to subject in the artist's work and finally to work of art itself. Pierre Eman's mannequins were definitely artwork itself.